when you were sitting next to Saberhagen, we kind of touched on it here. Now let's run that where you're sitting here in Los Angeles, a few weeks removed. I mean, the little kid in you is like flipping out, right? Despite oh. everything that you've gone through in your life, your career. It's it, yeah. You know, it's, sports has a way of doing that too. It it's you, you never lose. I don't think like the, the fan worship kind of thing. Right. When I see any of those uh, players, uh, if I see any of the chiefs, if I see any kind of professional football player that I, I even, you know, mm -hmm. admired as a kid or the, uh, for another team, I'm like, whoa, I can't believe it. I, you know, when I was a kid, I loved the Steelers. And I, I, I um, one time I was able to get into the locker room with a guy who knew Bradshaw. And I saw Lynn Swan over by the locker room. How old were you? I was about 10. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and my the guy that was friends with Bradshaw worked with my dad. He goes, "You want to go say hey to Lynn Swan?" And I was like, "I'm good. I'm okay." Mm -hmm. I so badly wanted to do it, but I was so uh, nervous mm -hmm. that uh, I just couldn't bring myself to doing it. And uh, and then most of my life, even as an adult, I was like, "Why didn't I say hi to Lynn Swan? Mm -hmm. I would have really." That would have been really, really cool. Would you like us to take care of that at some point? We I'll tell you, that, that would be pretty. That would be pretty cool if you could swing it with John Stallworth. <laughs> that dude's my all-time favorite. Him, For Stallworth. Sure. When I was a kid, always Stallworth. Where did the Steelers' love come from? Just I think that you know there was a when when you were uh, at that time you were either Cowboys or Steelers. Right. It seemed like it seemed like two teams existed. Mm -hmm. But I used to before I moved to Kansas City when I was a kid. I, I uh, we had a football pencil machined at our school. And I used to give the Steeler pencils to this guy that worked with my dad that was from Pittsburgh. And so the Steelers were playing. I was living in California. They were mm -hmm. playing the L.A. Rams. And he took me. I was in first grade. And that changed my life. I was a such a Steelers fanatic as a kid. To this day, if I need to remember a number, an, a phone number, an address or something, right. I'll associate it with a, a player from like the 70s, late 70s Steelers. If you name a number, I'll see if I, I mean, I don't even know. Go for it, Chris. That's, um, that's this is all. This is, it, we this, can just we haven't planned. Ball. We haven't planned this, this is all, out. This is, okay, this is just all jog the, go through the, uh, go to the pro football reference. All right, stand by. And, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll put together a, a phone number for Paul Rudd, area code first. We'll figure it out. For his Steelers, okay. So, uh, what year in particular? I don't know. Maybe go like uh, 79. 1979 Steelers. Call him up. I don't know. This is fantastic. I have no idea. 78, 79? What, you know, I don't know. We'll see. Do you got it over there, Chris? Yep. Okay. For Paul Rudd. Uh, let's let's do uh, Rocky Blyer to start. So he's 20. 20. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Lynn Swan. 88. Benny Cunningham. 89. Larry Brown. 79. Nailing it, actually. <laughs> this is Theo. Or, or do this. The Theo Bell, Theo T Bell, Bell 83. Yeah. 83, correct. Yeah. If you want, come on. Say a number, and I'll see if I can get that player. Nice. 63. 63. Was that Ernie Holmes? Tom oh, Dornbrook. Oh, no. Oh, it. Tom Dornbrook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, 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 right. Ernie Holmes was, he was before 79. Okay. Give another one. 47. 47 was Mel Blunt. Correct. 59. 59 was Jack Ham. 52. 52, Mike Webster. Those are all correct. Fantastic. It's pretty impressive. Paul Rudd, everybody. Oh. 58 for the win. 58 Freaking for Rudd. the win would be Jack Lambert from Kent State University. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Paul Rudd, Penn, uh, Penn, uh, Pittsburgh Steeler numerologist, Paul Rudd. I had no idea about that yeah. with, with your memory like that with the Steelers. So when the with Steelers this... started, well, I mean, recently, as you know, the Steelers can't if this Chiefs can't get past the Steelers, do you still have a little bit of uh, Steelers? I still love? have a little, like I still like the Steelers. I always have. They've just. But what happened, I think, is that when I was a kid, uh, you know, after all my favorite players kind of left the team, mm -hmm. and then I was in the kind of the gray area for a few years. I was, and I, you know what? I, I, I really like the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid. Still, I was still a kid. Mm -hmm. And then I left. I moved away from Kansas City. And then I was like, oh, man, I'm Chiefs all the way. And now it's absolutely and has been for decades. Yeah, right. Uh, the Chiefs are the, you know, I, I find that a lot of people, when they move away from their hometown, mm -hmm. that's when they get really into their 
their team. Sure. So, I mean, with Stone Street, uh, when you were with uh, on our on our show uh, at Big Slick, where you were there with Saberhagen, Stone Street bought, brought Mitchell Schwartz with him. Mm -hmm. And our favorite moment at, was at the end of that interview where I said to Mitchell Schwartz, you know, hey, thanks for coming by. It's great having a member of the tribe here. And Stone Street goes, Chiefs. And we're like, no, wrong tribe, man. Different tribe. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. And Schwartz is member of you know yeah that's right tribe. that's it we take great pride we take great pride in our professional jewish athletes because we're few and far between <laughs> i know that's in a pamphlet not a book <laughs> is that seen from airplane uh, <laughs> i'd like something light to read we have this leaflet of great <laughs> jewish sports heroes <laughs> i forgot about that the rich eisen show weekdays at noon eastern on audience